Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about elements of a prompt. When designing your prompts and building out your use cases with large language models, you have to think a lot about your prompts and the way you're designing them to get the most or the best results from these language models. Uh, and for that, you have to think about its design, right? So you have to think about a little bit about the prompt design itself. Typically, a prompt is composed of the following. So they typically include an instruction. Uh, we will talk a little bit about what instruction means in a bit. It also consists of a context, but context really depends on the use case. So in this case, in the example I'm providing here on the right-hand side, which is a basic text classification, you can think of it like sentiment analysis, where we're just classifying you know, an input text doesn't really require context or it doesn't use any context. We're not providing like, for instance, demonstrations or anything like that. It's just, we are doing it in a very simple way where we're not providing extra context to the model. We just expect the model to be able to perform this task. Later down the road, we're gonna talk about zero shot prompting and how language models are able to do this in a later video. But Talking about the elements of a prompt, input data is also really important to highlight here. How you pass the input to the model really depends on the use case. So in this case, because I am classifying a piece of text, it makes sense to use something like text as an indicator, but I could also be very specific for the model, which also helps the model a bit. It, it, it steers the model to get the right behavior from it, right? So I can say something like uh, a tweet or whatever type of input this is. But I kept it very generic in the example here. So I just say text, and then I think the food was okay. It's really the input data here that we're passing to the model so the model can classify. Now, the last bit here, which is is output indicator, I'm using output indicator as sentiment, as an example. Now, I'm being very specific to the model about what is the output that I'm expecting. So it makes sense to use something like sentiment, but if we are talking in generic terms, we could also use output as an indicator itself, right? And most of these models are intelligent enough to understand what it means when you say output, they will try to perform the task based on the instruction or the original instruction you gave it. So that is a summary of the elements of a prompt. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna show you how you would design this in something like the OpenAI Playground. But before I do that, I wanna go back here to our prompting guide. And here is where you find a little bit on more about the elements of a prompt and the different definitions for each element, right? So we have the instruction, context, input data, and output indicator. And we also have the example that I'm using here, which you can directly you know, copy paste into the playground as we did in the previous guide and tutorial that we showed in the previous um, section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it right into the system panel. So that, as we said in the previous guide, the system panel or the system role is where you would define what type of behavior you are expecting from this model. In this case, I'm using GPT 3.5 Turbo as my model. So I can just space it like this and I, I can submit this as is. So I'll just submit. And you can see here that the model outputted neutral. So it understood the task and it gave me neutral. It seems like neutral is the right label for this one. It, it, it is a little bit subjective, I must say, for this task, but I think that's correct. And that's the expected output that I expected from this model. I didn't change anything here in the playground. Again, I'm using the same default settings. Now, there is a different way how you can think about the prompt design and leveraging the different roles available in the playground. Also understand that a lot of these playgrounds are making use of this standardized way of prompting these models using these different roles, like the system role, assistant role, 
and also the user role. So I wanna show you a different version of how you can do this particular task without using the system role or using system role in combination with the user role. So one way you can do this and you can easily try here is you can essentially take this and then you can use this right as under user role you can just add the input here right and then i can just remove that so i pretty much simplified the prompt design here and let's see what the model outputs right you can see that the model outputted the same output that we are expecting and I did a couple of things here, right? I simplified the prompt by separating the different components or elements into the different roles. And the reason I did this is because I do know that those roles are used in that way for this model, right? This model was trained with a lot of data that looks very similar to how I am inputting the particular you know, task with the description here in the system role and the actual input which goes in the user role and the assistant role is obviously just the output of the model right and i got rid of all the different indicators so the output indicator which is sentiment in this case i didn't need to use that and i also got rid of the text which is the input indicator that i was using i also completely got rid of that so i'm not using for instance i'm not using this anymore right so you can use the roles to simplify the task and kind of leverage this interface that's now very standardized in the world of large language models to get more reliable outputs out of these models for any task that you're interested in building so that's a little bit about the elements of a prompt an example as well in the playground so you can start to play around exactly with that and, and and you can try different outputs you can try different inputs right to see what you get as output you can try like positive text or negative text um, to see what you get now there are more advanced ways on how we can use these different roles the system role to keep improving the reliability of this model this is a very simple example but you know in a robust system where you're trying to put something like this into production, like a sentiment classifier, you would have to experiment and evaluate how these models are performing on this task. And you would need like, you need a, a bunch of examples to actually evaluate properly, right? But this is just a simple example, just to show you and demonstrate the different elements of a prompt and why it's important to think about that when you're designing and optimizing your prompts. We'll talk a little bit more about you know, tactics to use those roles better in a future video. So please subscribe if you want to learn more about that. And also we'll talk a little bit about the different indicators as well, right? So how do we pass, how do we pass optimally inputs and how do we declare our outputs as well? How do we specify outputs to get reliable outputs, right? Sometimes we may want to structure the output in a way maybe we want it in a kind of a JSON object or some type of object or, or output format so all of that is a conversation we will have in future videos but for now it's really important to think about different elements because this is what each one of the prompts that you will be designing and optimizing will carry a combination of these different components now something I didn't mention is while I was demonstrating this particular figure here um, you know, there like context is not really required, right? So instruction is sort of a requirement because you need to instruct the model and it's good to be specific about the instruction that you want the model to carry out. The input data, it really depends on the task as well because you could be asking the model, generate me an email of using this particular tone and so on. And that doesn't really require input data, right? It's, you're just asking the model to be creative and to kind of generate or produce a new email that you might be interested in. So all of these different components, right? You can combine them, but it really depends on the task that you're working on. And again, output indicator as well, it really depends on the task, right? In the email generation example, we, we didn't use an output indicator, but you may be interested, for instance, to generate an email that has a specific structure, like say uh, has like a body or you want to output it in a different format or something like that, then in that case, you probably can design some type of uh, in extra instruction or indicator specifying the particular output that you want from the model. So you can steer the model better. So I'll leave it at that for this video. Hopefully you got an idea of 
what are the important components of a prompt so that you can continue to developing your use cases and uh, start to think more deeply about how to design these prompts to reliably use these models.